Bulls offense, find the extra man, make the extra pass. He says Shulga doesn't have to score 20 for this VCU team to win. He just has to make the right choice with the Rock, guys. Yeah, and AJ, if he does make the right choice, then VCU will go out of the championship for a second straight year. The tip is controlled by the Hawks, and there they go, quickly into the offensive ends. Lynn Greer helping to run the point. They have three guys that can run the point for St. Joseph's on the floor right now. There's one of them, Eric Reynolds, for three, no good. And Jackson with the first rebound of the game. Yeah, they're going to look to get him looks early and often. When he gets off to a great start, St. Joe's is very tough to beat. BC, one of the best three-point shooting defense defending teams in the country. Jolga swings it around. Bearstow, watch him to drive to the basket. He's cut off. Shot clock is under 10. He's assessing. He wants the screen from Furman. He thought about a pull-up J. Leans in. Doesn't get the roll. Ball bounces around. And Fleming, who's been so important, gets the rebound for St. Joseph's. So you got to keep an eye on keeping BCU out of the lane. Speaking keeping of somebody out of the lane. Well, Lynn Greer had two big free throws the other day. He gets the first bucket. But there's Bear Stowe with the answer. Greer, whose dad, Lynn, scored over 2,000 points at Temple, was a brilliant basketball player. Reynolds covered by Shulga. We'll watch that matchup against Reynolds all day. He gets his man off his feet and is able to get the kiss off the glass. Pretty good jump stop by Reynolds at the end. Yeah, definitely playing off two feet of control, and that's what I talk about in the open. Not only can he do it from behind the arc, he can get in the lanes. Very shifty, got a lot of wiggle with his handle. Tough customer. Seb Jackson missed the three. Furman with the offensive rebound. Jackson gets it back again. This time he swings it off the glass. It's good. Well, Jackson's been very well from three the last few games, but again, his strength is getting into the rim, and that's also BCU's strength, and that's why they put so much pressure on you, because they can get into the paint. These two teams met a couple weeks ago. St. Joseph's had the early lead, but then BCU built a 10-point lead. It did come back down to a one-possession game toward the ends. Extra pass, Reynolds slicing through the defense, has it knocked away, gets it back. It was tipped. He didn't pass it to himself. Brown, the freshman, sneaking up to the basket, gets the bounce off the glass. Now, this is a tremendous freshman. They have so many, as I said, shifty, dynamic guards that can score the basketball. Brown can not only get to the rim, he can shoot it from distance as well. Well, for this uh, St. Joseph's team that averages over 10 threes per game, they've got three buckets in the paint driving to the hoop. It's a two-point lead for the Hawks. Two and a half minutes into the first half. Jackson, bounce pass cut off. And Xavier Brown, the freshman, who Billy Lang said is probably better than he thought he would be at this point, brings it up, and Greer turns it over. Shulga, extra pass to Bearstow. Bearstow right to the basket, off the front of the rim, no good, no foul is called. Reynolds finds Greer along the baseline. That's an out of control shot. And two plays going back to back <laughs> with verticality. The fans on either side do not like it. But, Tom, we got a veteran efficient crew here. Quaddy Quaddy got away with an offensive foul, but then fouls Lynn Greer in the open floor. John Gaffney made that call. Gaffney, Connell, Clockerty. That's the final four crew. Big time game, big time crew. They're going to let them play a little bit. So two-point lead for St. Joseph's. Furman will check out. Lawal will check in. Lawal has played very well recently. In fact, that's one of the things that makes VCU so tough is that they are long and they have different guys that can fill gaps coming in. And teams that can really survive in tournaments where you have to play three and four games to win are teams that have a ton of depth, and that's VCU. And not only do they have a ton of depth, that depth is productive. Rounds three, no good. Ball tipped out. And Cameron Brown with the the rebound off the tip. Got Cameron Brown and Xavier Brown. Shot clock is at 10. Greer fadeaway jumper. He may have bought into the crowd counting down from five. So far, the Hawks three of seven from the floor. VCU two of five. Jackson bounce pass to Lawal. Bumped. He can't finish, but he'll go to the free throw line. That foul is on Rashir Fleming. Yeah, going back to that last shot trying to make a shot over Sean Bearstow. That's why VCU has a great defense. It's their length. And on the other end, just getting to the rim. Zeb Jackson, what he does, then 
the BCU defense is pre um, offense, shall I say, is predicated on getting into the rim. That activates totally the wall that allows their big guards to get to the rim to make shots and also kick for open threes. First free throw for the wall, first of two. It's good. All right, time for the keys to the game brought to you by Ace, the helpful place. Yeah, as I said before, you got to keep VCU out of the paint. St. Joe's got to push the tempo. That's what they do best. They have those quick guards. Reynolds, a rareness. There has to be some Reynolds rap, shall I say, from VCU. And they are great and adept at making the extra pass. It is what makes their offense so potent. Wall missed the second one after making the first. Xavier Brown with the rebound. It's a one-point lead for St. Joseph's. Just under 16 to play in the first half. The winner moves on to face the winner of Duquesne and St. Bonaventure. A Sandico in for the first time. He's called for the traveling violation, the sophomore. Well, we're underway. Game one of two in the Atlantic 10 semi. People are doing it a myriad of different ways in this league. The parity has been unbelievable. You and I have been courtside for a lot of these games. We are not surprised where we are right now. Our Bearstow brings it up for VCU. One point lead for St. Joseph's. Bearstow doing a little assessing. Gets it to Shulga. Shulga hovering. Baseline fadeaway. Jumper is good. And it's a one point lead for VCU. And Shulga first team all league. Came, from, came with Ryan Odom from Utah State. Very good player. In many a different ways. They want to make him take twos for sure. Into the paint for St. Joseph's. The Sandico is foul going up, and he'll go to the free throw line. Just a 64% free throw shooter. That foul will go on the wall. Here's that pass to free up Shulka. And there's a screen, re-screen there. Mike told the wall to get him open. Shoga still had to make a tough shot, good defense, better offense. But Asandako on the other end, I actually believe he can be an X factor in this game because of his size in the paint. And if they put him on the line, it's going to be even tougher. He's got to make those easy bunnies, Tom. Yeah, seven feet, 285 pounds out of Paris, France. He averages eight points per game. He has two points so far in the Atlantic 10 tournament in the two games. And now a free throw to tie it, and it's good. 7-7 in the early going. Barristow, the point guard, six foot eight. Dribbles to the baseline, gets himself free for Zeb Jackson. A little extra pass from Lawal. That's off. It's going to be an air ball out of bounds. Neither team is really uh, settled in from beyond the arc, let's just say. There's only been one basket that hasn't been in the paint for either team so far. You see the Rams, they bring in Joe Bamisil. And I said before, Zeb Jackson, even though he's been shooting the ball well, sometimes it could be fool's goal. You see, Zeb Jackson's going to come out here. Ryan Oden mentioned, you've got to let him go. you got to let him feel the game out. He's not shooting well. He'll start to get into the lane and create ruck a ruckus that way. Yeah, Bell is in with Bamisil. Bamisil is a threat off the bench. He averages just under 14. There's a reason why he comes off the bench, and we'll get to it. Here's Reynolds for three up top. No good. Deadens off the side of the rim. He's Sandico with the foot pack. It's good. As I mentioned, Tom, his size could be a factor. No reason for totally wall there. There was no switching or anything like that. He's got to box him out. Got to be physical with, with a Sandico. Well, good caught inside. Bamisil into the paint. Extra pass. Bell for three. That's not his game. It's in and out. And the rebound tipped out of bounds by St. Joseph's. It'll remain VCU basketball. See his son to go doing his work. Total wall trying his best. But a fortuitous bounce to a son to go and getting to the other rim with the left hand. Nice finish there. 20 on the shot clock. So the possession arrow doesn't change. As Bell will inbound for VCU. VCU with 21 wins. St. Joseph's with 21 wins. They faced each other just one time. And that's what they think about Lawal and his jumper. They just let him go. He was about 12 feet for the basket. Bell to the hoop, and he's got a clear path, and he lays it in. Michael Bell, the freshman from London. He's starting to come on these last few games. A nice kid. Sandigo has to move his feet. Have to be somewhat of a rim protector there. But as I mentioned before, that is BCU's game. Getting to the rim. And when you get to the rim, and Tobolu Wall is there. Smack it on the glass. 
There's Stowe to Shulga. Shulga into the paint. Swings it around the wall. Jams it home. That's what he does best. He knows where the iron is and he'll slam it 58 times. The deception is when you talk about VCU, you talk about their three-point shooting. What they want to do is get in the lane, and that is what creates all the havoc for their offense. Dan Brown outside to Xavier Brown. And the seal's on him to Fleming. Fleming tries to dribble behind his back. He lost control. There'll be a tie-up. And the possession arrow belongs to BCU. Well, time now for our Reese's player profile. And Sean Barstow is the six foot eight inch point guard whose mom coached him when he was a kid and had him be a point guard, but nobody knew he'd be six foot eight. That certainly helps out. Comes from good stock, had a brother that played in New Mexico, Cam Barstow. Came from Utah State with Ryan Odom along with Max Shoga. Has not had the shooting season that he had when he was at Utah State. Shot about 38%. But when he gets on the lane, he's a very savvy player that can make plays. Also defensively, he's long as well. Here's Bamasil for three. No good. Too strong. The wall with the offensive rebound. He's harassed. Bear Stowe back in his way in. Covered by Reynolds. Bear Stowe into the paint, over the top of Reynolds, it's good, it's 12-9 VCU. As I mentioned, Tom, that's what he does best. Again, doesn't matter if you want to play off of him and close out short, he's going to back you down. If you don't come with a double, it's going to be tough to handle this group. Very smart basketball team offensively. See, no one's coming with the double, they're taking away the three-point shooters, and it's leaving him alone with Eric Reynolds in an ISO situation. Who doesn't want to foul, but he's also giving up about five inches. Under 13 to play. VCU is six for eight inside the arc, and that's why they have a four-point lead. Asandako gives it to Xavier Brown. Brown covered up top by Bamasil. Off the screen, snaking his way through, nearly lost it. Asandako with a shot fake, and he powers his way toward the low post. Shot clock is at five. Career. That's very active defense by the Rams. Shot clock at one. Brown tries to get it to go. No good, but how about Greer all by himself? How did he get that rebound? There were three VCU players in the area. The ball's flying around. Just the activity by Greer. Kwachik out of the doghouse. Off the glass. He lays it in. Very nice move by Kwachik. They needed that. This VCU Ram team was trying to assert themselves to get one more stop that offensive rebound allowed them to get another opportunity they cut the lead to two two-point lead under 12 to play in the first half jackson off the high screen thought about the three instead finds bell bell toward the paint shot clock good. at seven they did a good job of stopping them from getting to the rim it's very important to keep them out of the paint tough shot for jackson it's good a fadeaway jumper zeb jackson the transfer from michigan one of five guys on this roster to be part of the championship team last year. Tom St. Joe's will take Zeb Jackson making tough twos. Again, they don't want this team to make threes and twos. It'll be very difficult to beat them. Tough contested twos is what they want them to take. Reynolds to Kwachik. Kwachik to the baseline. Got away with the travel. Passes into the VCU bench. That's four turnovers for St. Joseph's. Um, Zab Jackson has been playing absolutely great. They're very good free throw shooting team. And when they get in there, Tom, they can throw it to Furman or they can throw it up to Toby the Wall. They're just very difficult to guard. Well, Bearstow's on the bench, so Shulga will run the point. He'll be helped out with Zeb Jackson up top. Bamasil is the third guard. Furman and Bell are the big men for VCU. Meanwhile, for St. Joseph, Rashir Fleming is back in. He's in the middle. He's number 13. He's been excellent. Shulga, turnaround jumper over the top of Greer. It's a six-point VCU lead. Again, you're talking about getting to the lane. They're going to take away the three-point shot of Shulga. But Shulga, because he has size, he can shoot over the top of Greer. They're going to have to really get some gaps and stop them from getting into the lane. VCU is 0 for 4 from beyond the arc, but they are 8 of 10 inside the arc. Cam Brown to Xavier Brown. Shot clock under 10. Bamasil's done a nice job on Xavier Brown. Lynn Greer, shot clock at three. Greer spinning underneath. He doesn't realize it. It's a violation. That's already five turnovers now for St. Joseph's. You got to give that BCU basketball team credit. See, coming off that ball screen here, 
Shoga does a really good job getting to the lane. And then it's just very difficult to stop him if you're not going to have guys in the gap that force him to kick. That force him to kick the ball. And he will kick the ball, as A.J. said before in her first hit. That's what is making his game so good right now. Under 10 to play, Batman Steele from the free throw line. He's dribbling too much, and the turnover's forced. That's great hands inside by Cam Brown. Not only great hands, but great toughness. That's what it's going to take. And the look inside, Fleming can't finish the slam, but he's fouled going up, and he'll go to the free throw line. Ryan Odom talked about sprinting back in transition, finding people. St. Joe's, because they have a ton of shooters who can shoot. It's a great pass there. Thurman going to the rim. Furman lost him for a second. Well, that foul is called on Furman. And Fleming to the free throw line. Rashir Fleming, 14 points, 8 rebounds in game 1. 6 points and 12 rebounds in game 2. And the first of 2 is good. And the winner of this game will move on to face the winner of St. Bonaventure and Duquesne. Those two teams have faced each other twice so far. And both co uh, both coaches described the first game the same way. <laughs> they both called it a rock fight. Second shot, short, rebound, Shulga. VCU up by five. Okay, two very good coaches in this game. Two very good coaches that are going to be in the next game. But VCU... I've always thought this year that this team had a chance. We've had their games a few times, Tom. They haven't always shown their best stuff, but when they play great defense and they're fishing on offense, they're as good as any team in this league. Shot clock is at four. Shulga to Bell. He slipped his way open. There's goaltending on Fleming. And it's up to a seven-point lead. It's a 12-3 run for VCU. Can't fall asleep. I mentioned in open, not only are they good passers, but they're willing passers. A lot of people, that's an easy call for this a veteran crew. A lot of kids would have shot that basketball. Shoga, right? Dropping a dime to Bell is what makes this team so good. They're so connected. You see with 60% overall from the floor. Brown kicks it off. Quachek 4-3. It's an air ball, and Zeb Jackson runs it down. Here's the long outlet pass to LaVall. He throws it off Cam Brown. That is an amazingly smart amazing play. Amazing play. Physical. So it'll be VCU basketball with 26 on the shot clock. Watch this. I mean, that was the, the presence of mine. Oh, wow. We got to watch that. It might have been off LaVall's foot. <laughs> uh, it looked like from our vantage point it went off the leg of of Cam Brown But that shot did make it look like an optical illusion offensive foul is called on the wall Ryan O'Connell my little makeup call there Tom. I don't know <laughs> these guys covering for each other That's the second foul on the wall, so he's gonna have to check out Quanti Quanti is gonna come in Really have enjoyed this league this year we've Got a front row seat to some very good games. I, think, I don't want to say this league is underrated, but this league is pretty good. Dayton obviously looks like they're a few in to be in the tournament. That's going to be a big stiller here in the next few days. But what a year has been for the A-10. There's Reynolds left open for three. A little too strong. And the rebound is taken down by Nelson, who's in for the first time. Jason Nelson, the transfer from Richmond. A great offensive execution there. He won't miss many of those. They're going to talk about how they have to guard that. Quaddy Quaddy. Up top. Hands it off to Shulga. He's switching the screen. Fleming got a bigger guard. Bigger player, shall I say, on Shulga. That's the shot they want them to take. Switch. Keep them out of the lane. Contested three. One-shot game. Now the team has made a three so far. Greer kicks it off to the corner. Fleming for three. It's uh, no good. And the rebound by Zeb Jackson. Took a couple bounces before it was no good. Jackson to Nelson. He'll fire again. No good again. The ball tipped around. It's the same. I was going to say, Tom, this is St. Joe's pace, but he's got to make a couple of shots. Yes. Greer, beautiful spin move. Reverse layup is blocked away by Quani Quani. And Shulga is fouled from behind. They'll get Lynn Greer on that one. 7.42 to play here in the first half. The teams are 0 for 13 from beyond the arc. Starting to rest way up, therefore no basket. 
Thank you. All right, so they took the goaltending away. So that means there's a bucket that's taken away. Exactly. That is interesting that it was Very that long ago. So it's a five-point lead for VCU. 7.38 to play. Here's Bearstow to Shulga. The switching defense there by St. Joe's. Shulga, jumper no good off the front of the rim. And Xavier Brown with the rebound. And again, neither team has made a three. There's the sixth turnover for St. Joseph's. Jackson high-stepping into the basket. Too strong off the glass. And Reynolds with a powerful rebound. Hawks have to get Reynolds going here. They have to find shots for him. They do, but they cannot turn the basketball over. Anytime BCU gets a turnover, his advantage breaks. That's how they continue to get ahead of you, and you can't catch them. Just a stifling defense that puts the clamps on you. Hawks, the Hawks have to figure it out. Tom, they got to get in the lane to get some driving kicks. Shot clock is at five. Reynolds up top to Brown, way downtown. He shot that one from Hell's Kitchen, and it's off the side of the rim. Yeah, that size is starting to bother them. They got to get some cutting, a little bit too much dribbling, get some ball screens, get in the lane, they even try to get to the foul line or get some driving kick situations. Can't beat this team by just dribbling and try to play one on one. Bearstow caught in the paint outside for Nelson. Jackson. Thought about the three at first, then took the three. It's no good. And again, neither team has made a three-pointer. That's significant. They're combined 0 for 16. The Hawks averaged 10 threes made a game. Here's Fleming with the drive. The finish is no good. He got a pretty good look. Yeah, I'll take that look all day long. Ryan Olin on the sideline. He's not happy with that shot that Zeb Jackson took. He wants this type of action, driving into the lane. Still tough to guard because St. Joe's is doing a good job. When you drive, they take away the shooters, forcing you. And there's another turnover again. Seven turnovers for St. Joseph's. Nelson, tough finish off the bottom of the iron. Tom, that's, Tom, I was going to say, there's been like several situations where yes. they've gotten a steal, and they have not scored. I would agree with that. BC has missed its last five shots, and that's why the lead is only five. Plus, they had a bucket taken away, which we'll get to in a moment. But think about it. They, they should be up at least 10 to 15, and they're not. St. Joe's is lucky right now. They just got to find a way to get an easy basket here. And it's another turnover. All right, so this is the goaltending that was originally called... Oh, God. Okay. So, yeah, did not hit the it backboard. didn't hit the backboard, so that's why they took it away. So that's a good review by the officials. So we went to break. It was 19-12. Gotcha. They took the bucket away, 17-12. And that's why it's a five-point lead. And neither team, as you saw on the graphic, has not made a three-point shot because that's the strategy, defensive-wise, of both coaches not to allow a three-point shot. St. Joe's, they depend heavily on it. They cannot win this game unless they make three-point shots. Zeb Jackson kept the bucket and the bump. It pays to be left-handed when you're driving like that. <laughs> no question about it. And again, the reason why that happens is you can see Eric Reynolds is staying home. They, when they call that staying home, he's staying with the shooter. So there's a lane there to drive. Zeb Jackson going with his dominant hand, his left hand, with a strong finish. Klotchik's going to check in because Fleming just picked up his second personal foul. That's significant because Fleming has played really well. He's got double figures in four consecutive games. Plus, he's an excellent defender. And he had 12 rebounds the other day. And Jackson can't convert the three-point play. Bodies falling, but bodies being helped up also off that miss. Well, Tom, I'll say this. Think about it. They're not giving up threes, right? So St. Joe's is down right now. They're doing a really good job defensively. You say, why is that? Because if they could score, this would be a game. They can't score, and they're turning the ball over. Yeah, Cam Brown has that one knocked away. He got his man off his feet, but the help was there. Jackson speeding into the paint. Four and a half to play in the first half. St. Joseph's has got over five minutes without a bucket, and there's the first three of the game for either team. It's a nine-point lead for VCU. And a timeout called by St. Joseph's. They may have ruled this one a two. The officials will look at it. Well, here you go. The team that I think people really need to look at is Richmond, and I know the net is yes. not where it needs to be for them. But you and I saw that team this year, and our, our the eye test tells us that
that Richmond is an NCAA team. So is Indiana State, and there's no question about that. Yeah, no question. The Indiana State, Josh Church has done a tremendous job, you know, with that group. But they can only take 68 teams, Tom, and you know that. I know. So somebody's not going to be happy. And then Grid third missed Eric Reynolds, the second on that pick and pop action. Cannot do that. They need to get him going. Asandako outside for Cam Brown for three. It was a sweet stroke from the time it left his hand. See, I would never do that. I would never go double Asandako. They're struggling to score. Cameron Brown has not made a shot. Now you let one of their lethal three-point shooters get a clean look. And that's the first three for either team today. The lead firm and open. He's dribbling up top. They're harassing Bamasil. Bamasil from the free throw line. It Pinballs in and out. He gets his own rebound, but Kwachik is able to pull it out of his hands. Watch is playing some valuable minutes for St. Joe's. We'll see what they have cooked up here. I like that same action. Get a ball screen, pick and pop for Reynolds. See if they mess up again on the switch. Yeah, they have three different guys that work that ball screen up top. Asandako inside Furman. There's a traveling violation on Asandako. That'll be the ninth turnover for St. Joseph's in this first half. Yeah, very good defense there by Furman holding his ground. Asandako had a chance. Come off two feet, go over your left shoulder, get to the other side. They did not come with the double that time to lead three point shooters open. Heading toward the three minute mark here in the first half. The winner goes on to face the winner of Duquesne and St. Bonaventure. That'll come up later. Shulga was bumped around. Here's Reynolds with the steal. Reynolds going to the rim. Reynolds off the glass. Gets the what ball. Finish. Woo. As I mentioned, Tom, all the different times he's coming right back at you. This game is starting to pick up. VCU has made two of its last 11 shots in the steal by Lynn Greer. A four-point game, 235 to play in the first half. Sonico was open. They go to Reynolds. He's open for three. Yes! Happens quick. Happens quick. The Hawks are flying now. It's an 8-0 run. Last two buckets for St. Joseph's. And you got to credit their defense for the reason this 8-0 run has transpired. But you know what? BCU has to think about helping in the lane. They do a great job of putting two and three people in the ball. But you just can't leave Reynolds ever because he is the difference maker that can change the game. Barristow barking out some orders. Barristow diving to the basket, keeps his pivot foot. He's caught. Shot clock under 10. Bamasil, that's a tough one. To the corner for Jackson. Jackson steps back. He'll take a three, and it's no good. Kwachik with the rebound. Outstanding defense. Outstanding defense. Kwachik in the game, putting him on Cameron Barristow because he can't, again, score on the bigger player. That's a great chess match move by Billy Lane. VCU's shooting percentage is down under 40. Asandako in the paint, throws it up, and he gets the roll, and St. Joseph's has the lead, 22-21, thanks to a 10-0 run. As I said before, I thought Asandako could be an X factor in this game. With his size, he gets a little bit too deep. You can't stop him. The crowd, got a great crowd here for this first matchup of the semis of the 8-10, Tom. And a turnover nearly for BCU. Barstow able to recover. Fade away. Baseline jumper. Good. That is a sweet stroke. And when you're six foot eight and you have ball handling skills, you can make that. On Barstow over. Watch it. Still a tough shot. Again, playing into the game plan of Billy Lang. No three point shots for the Rams. Force them to make tough twos. But you have to get it done on this end. Just one of the best defensive teams in the league. BCU is 0 for 9 from beyond the arc. That's a credit to St. Joseph's defense. Asandako, 7 on the shot clock, powering his way in. And a foul on the floor. They'll get Furman for that. That's his second personal foul. So Lawal, who's going to check in, is going to pick up his second. You see, no help coming because, again, they don't want to activate the three-point shooting. Sean Bester with a nice fadeaway. Again, a tough shot over Kwachik. I'll take that all day long. That's why he is an asset with his size, even though he had struggled from behind the arc. Lynn Greer will inbound the basketball on the baseline for St. Joseph's. One-point lead for BCU. 36 seconds left, 16-second difference. They left Reynolds open. You can't do that. 
He converts his second three. It's a two-point lead for the Hawks. Oh, that's almost impossible to fathom. You trail him off the screen. You get on his numbers. You force him to curl and make a two. And the St. Joe's faithful. Look at Billy Lang. Ken Captain said, get off the floor, Billy. Ten seconds left. Shogo just waiting. Covered up top by Greer. And Greer called for the foul. That'll just be the fourth team foul. So VCU has to inbound the basketball. Yeah. Yeah, they can be super aggressive here. Got to keep them out the paint. Seven seconds on the clock. Look for a ball screen from the wall for Shoga to try to get him going to the lane or Bearstow as well, depending on the matchups. Again, they got Lynn Dritt the third, Gordon Bearstow. Look for him to get it back and try to go one on one in ISO. Seven point four to play. Bearstow gets it into Shulga. Shulga back to Bearstow. He's open for three. It's no good. The rebound by Kwachik, and he's fouled from behind. It's the 16 foul by VCU. So the St. Joseph's will have to inbound with 2.6 to play. But it's the third foul on the wall. That is significant. Certainly significant. Xavier Brown will check in. Here's that foul. An easy call by the refs. I mean, the wall just has to get back, not in position to get offensive rebound. That was a mix up there on that inbounds, and there was a fire exchange on the St. Joe's bench about who's guarding who. And it's very important because, again, VCU looks for matchups, Tom. Xavier Brown throws it up inside half court, and he banks it off the rim. It would have counted if it would have gone. And St. Joseph's will go into the half up by two. Thanks to a 13-2 run. They finished the half. They made five. Really emphasized to his guys was their transition offense. He said they have to get out faster. And when I asked him if they're going to make any defensive changes with Eric Reynolds and who they're matching up with him, he said no. They just have to stick to their fundamentals, keep playing good D, and get out faster on offense, guys. All right, AJ, thank you. By the way, speaking, AJ, of getting uh, off faster in offense, Howard is up in their ball game against Delaware State. I know you're a Howard alum, so March Madness may be following you. Here's Bearstow, and off the steal, the extra pass, and the slam. And we're tied up at 25. I have an idea that this is not going to be our last tie of the <laughs> second half. It certainly won't. Xavier Brown struggling thus far, has been playing very well. It showed with some credit, affecting the freshman. It's a big game for a freshman. He's got to really just ratchet it up a bit here and stop turning the rock over. Yeah, he was limited minutes-wise. He'll take a three short. Kwani Kwani with the rebound. And here come the Rams. Zeb Jackson leading the break. They've got Shulga off to the right. Bearstow to the left. Switching the screens. Now you have Lindgren the third guarding Bearstow. We'll see if they use that size to post him up. Bearstow off the street. He's open for three. It is good. Nothing but net. First three of the game for VCU. So Billy Lane told Lindgren the third. That's okay. Going under the screen. As I mentioned before, that's great that they knocked that shot down. Fool's goal could be. The question is, can St. Joe score on this end? 11 points for Bearstow. Reynolds pull up jumper. It is so sweet. He is free for a second and gets it to go. And he's got 12 points. So he leads all scores with 12. Bearstow has 11. Shulga for three. It's good. All of a sudden, it's raining three. <laughs> it happens quickly. It happens quickly. Bottom line is St. Joe's has to continue to score. You know the Rams are going to go on a, on a run. That's what they're doing right now. Cam Brown missed on that three. Here comes Bearstow backing his way in to the free throw line to the elbow. Down low to Furman. Back to Bearstow. Another three. That's off. Off the side of the iron. You could see that was off from the get-go as the ball was knocked out of bounds by Kwani Kwani. All the opposite. You see right here, Bearstow coming off this ball screen. Lynn Gear the third right here. Let it roll. Going under that screen right there. You don't want to go under the screen on really good shooters, but you will go under the screen on a player like Bearstow, who's not shooting well for three because you don't want him to get into the paint. Four point lead for VCU. Ryan Odom thought that last ball went off the uh, body of Cam Brown of St. Joseph's, but obviously not reviewable at this point. 
17 and a half to play. The winner goes on to the finals tomorrow in CBS, and the turnover's forced. And a foul over the back by Rashir Fleming. That'll be his third, and it's the 11th St. Joseph's turnover. It's the way they started the game, just being very sloppy. BCU taking advantage of points off turnovers. The game of this magnitude, every possession is critical. St. Joe's guards are very good at scoring the basketball right now. They do to be better in making sure they get quality possessions. That's that matchup right there. Bearstow turns and fires. No good off the front of the rim. Ball tipped out. He had the open look. Couldn't get it to go. I continue to say that as long as they're making twos to keep St. Joe's in the game, as long as St. Joe's can score and not turn the ball over. Lynn Greer to the free throw line. Over the top of the arm of Furman. He gets it to go down. Just a chess match between these two coaches. BCU wants to get in the lane. They want to create mismatches on offense. St. Joe's going to take away the three-point shots and force them to make these pull-ups like Zeb Jackson just took. Yeah, too strong. Ball is loose. Shulga picks up the loose ball. Back to Jackson along the baseline. Jackson reverses his field. Oh, oh, in. So fast. I don't know. I'd be dizzy on that <laughs> shot. So fast. But again, it happened because they got an extra possession. St. Joe's a little bit more awareness on, on the defensive glass. Very important not to give this team extra opportunities. Sandico thought about that three and said gets it to Reynolds. Now to Greer along the baseline. Greer kicks it out. Three from the sideline. It's good. What a game. Flashed <laughs> home game. from the side by Cameron Brown. You can tell these teams are playing for something special right now. Going back at each other. It's a one-point lead. Bearstow in the corner. See how they're going under that screen on Zeb Jackson, daring him to shoot the basketball. They got the switch. Great defensive possession there. Good hands, good eyes by Brown. His pass deflected out of bounds by Zeb Jackson. It will remain St. Joseph's basketball. Back and forth we go. The first of our two semifinals. VCU with the... Say this, and you can say transfer portal. You can say COVID seniors. You can say whatever you want to say. The bottom line is, in single elimination tournaments like this, it's must-see TV in college basketball right now. Well, it also happened here. Richmond, the number one seed, was knocked off. They shared the Atlantic 10 regular season title with Loyola. Loyola, number two seed, was knocked off. Greer swings it to Cam Brown for three. No good. In and out. He got a good look. He also was quick with his release. Yeah, I like that kick, that skip. is because the weak side defender had to rotate down to help on us and Danko. Jackson to a curling. Shulga. Shulga. Off the screen. And just fighting him over the top, forcing him to take a tough two, not allowing him to get behind the line. But again, just so much savvy and ability to be a tough shot maker is Shulga. And Shulga has 11. He and Barstow lead the way for VCU. The two Utah State graduates. Reynolds gets the handoff. Gets the three. Look, it's good. He knew it. He was already headed back on defense. We're tied up at 35. There's two ways to do that, Tom. You can come off a ball screen or you can give it to Eason Dunko, Eason Dunko and use that big body as a screen as well. Still a tough shot. Great call by Billy Lang. 15 points for Reynolds. He's five away from tying DeAndre Bembry for 15th all-time in St. Joseph's history. Jackson trying to answer. He does not. The rebound tipped around. Quanti Quanti called for the over the back. You live with that shot every single time. Asandico, you see Asandico with that screen right there. That screen is huge. Tobalu all still gets <laughs> out there, but on the shot maker, just right here. You just that screen by Asandico. It's just tough to get around. A lethal sniper like him from behind. The arc, you can't give him any daylight. Our sixth tie. By the way, Nelson just came in for VCU. No changes for St. Joseph's. Quani Quani just picked up a second foul for Ryan Odom. Looking to work. Here. 
Eric Reynolds, he's working off Hassan to go again. Let's see they work that same action. There it is up top, but he finds Hassan to go. Finger roll the basket. He was too far away. His rebound is no good. He's trying again. It's stolen away. Nelson's got it. I like the action. They knew they were going to have a double on Eric Reynolds. They dropped it. Hassan to go missed another bunny. Got to knock those down. Thought he would be crucial to this game. The wall, that's a tough shot. That's out of control. Ball is loose. What a save on the baseline by Brown, the freshman. Yeah, a little bit of frustration there. It's not what he does. Greer fouled in the paint on the pass. Well, BC, you don't do, does not want to get out of sorts here. Do what you continuously do best. Get it to your guards. Got to start the right shoulder a little bit. Got Nelson in the game. He's a drive and kick shooter. And Bearstow can get in the lane and create problems. But you're saying those credit, they've done a good job of making adjustments. Here's Greer. He finishes off the pass from Reynolds. That was a design play, and it's one that looks like they've run a hundred times. And definitely. They, they work off the switch of BCU. Great scouting there by Billy Lang and his group. Jolga in the paint. He was left open. He just dropped it in to tie this game at 37. Seven ties. Jolga has 13. And now on the other end, St. Joseph's back to work. The Hawks, the number nine seed. They won the A-10 championship in 2016. That was their last one. Greer, caught, low post. Got some separation with a little bit of a bump. Wow. Both teams almost have the same defense philosophy right now. Take away three-point shooters on drives and force the, the, the people, whoever drives, shall I say, that get to the lane to make a tough shot. And right now, both teams have done that. Bearstow going right at the big man. Shot is no good. Lawal with the rebound. Putback is tough with his back to the baseline. Happened so fast, Tom. You have to go under the screen on Bearstow. Once he gets ahead of steam down Broadway, it's tough to stop. And when Edson Danko has to come over and help, totally the wall gets activated for the offensive rebound. Brown short with the three. Easy rebound for Bearstow. Tied to 39, 12 10 to play. The winner goes on to the A 10 finals tomorrow on CBS. Here's Lawal, Sandico with a wall, and Lawal kisses it off the glass. Yeah, Sandico, that's a tough finish over that big body. He needs one. I think he's a little bit tired. Yes. Well, they're they're going to sub Rashir Fleming, and he's got three fouls. Greer trying to find some daylight. Nothing was there. Lawal with the rebound. It's five on four right now for VCU. Greer is hopping up from the baseline. Shulga to the basket. Slips it off the glass. And a timeout called because Greer was limping all over the place, and the officials recognize it. And for 15... And ended the half on two for 13. And now they started this half, half off nine for 15. I mean, they're doing a good job of being efficient scoring wise because they're getting in the lane and making shots. But those turnovers by St. Joe's don't help. They're converting them into baskets. St. Joe's with the basketball. Reynolds. He goes inside to a cutting. Fleming is fouled by Nelson. Again, as good as Reynolds is as a scorer, he also has great eyes as a passer. And you can see, like, there is no help. You see right there, you can't help. Michael Bell can't help because there's a shooter in the corner. So before it was a Sandico, he was a little bit winded, getting to the rim, can't finish. Insert Fleming, he gets to the rim. More athletic, more dynamic finisher. So Fleming to the free throw line, 62% for the year. Too strong. Lawal high in the air for the rebound. Lawal has six rebounds. It is crucial. You have to keep the Rams out of the lane. There's the alley oop to the wall. Cutoff. That was not a smart pass. Rashir Fleming with the cutoff. Eighth turnover for VCU. They've been able to stop Xavier Brown from getting into this game. You see that mismatch there. Quachik wanted it. He had Nelson. Now they were able to switch back. Yeah, the wall's back on Quachik. Shot clock at 10. VCU lead it to Reynolds goes to a cutting Fleming who finishes over the top of Nelson. They got the mismatch again. Same action. You got Zeb Jackson, number two, guarding Cameron Brown in the corner, draped on him, diving to the rim. Fleming, no one can stop him with his size and athleticism. 
We're heading toward the halfway point of the second half. Nelson for three up top. No good. Rebound run down by Bell. And VCU will get it back offensively. Bell into the paint. Bell high over the hand. He's able to get it to go. Boy, he's evolving. He is evolving as a player. The freshman who Ryan Odom recruited when he was at Utah State. And Ryan Odom said, listen, if I didn't get the VCU job, he was going to Dayton. <laughs> but again, an extra opportunity. Oh, Nelson may have gotten one, away with one there because of Bell, not a three-point shooter. Clock has got to keep him out of the lane. Very crucial. Brown to, to Brown again. Cam Brown for three. No good off the front of the rim. Here comes Jackson running the point. Leaves it for Nelson. Nelson got his feet set for three. No good. Open shots. Just tough one. Just not falling from behind the arc for the Rams. Given extra opportunities for St. Joe's. But this physical Ram defense, they're clamping down. They got to find a way to get number two open. VCU is 2 of 16 from beyond the arc. And Reynolds can't convert. Bamasil with the tip and the save. Good look, though. He's capable of making that oh, shot. Yeah. They're going to dig in on this end. Reynolds and Shulga have a game-high 15. Bell up top. He's open for three. Not his game. He grazes the front of the rim. See how far Quachik was playing off yes. him. And it's fool's goal. They're going to dare you to shoot it. As my old coach, Roly Massimino, would say, it's a reason why you're open. Yeah, he's 8 for 30 <laughs> from beyond the arc. Eight forty to play. Brown. Watch it. Lost it. Bell dives to the floor with it. And the ball picked up by St. Joseph's. Cam Brown from the baseline. He ties it up at 45. We've had 10 ties so far in this game. Little things that matter. Hustle plays. Diving on a loose ball. I know I'm going to call the timeout here. Even at 45. 821 to play. Here are the second half. The winner moves on to the A-10 final tomorrow. Right. I like when you say that. Yeah. Am I half right or am I somewhat half right? Or... I think somewhat trickles toward half. Right. Okay, I appreciate that. <laughs> I'll take that. Out of the timeout, VCU with the basketball. Bama Seal, again, held scoreless so far. Gets it into Jackson. Significant because Bama Seal averages 14 a game. Xavier Brown's doing a good job on him. Yeah, they call that reading him. You're not going to allow him to get any angle. Same thing with Shoga. Can't foul him. Hey, that's Shoga a tough shot. Shoga three. That's just a tough shot. Coming off that screen, I would love to see that big again. Come in, help. Force them to dive. Make Furman dive and make Furman make a shot as opposed to allowing Shoga to come off and take that three. Reynolds hoping for an answer. Cut off by Zeb Jackson. Cam Brown up top. Xavier Brown. Osandico pass to Reynolds open for three. It doesn't get the answer, but there's an offensive board by Fleming. He lost it. I think Bamisil got a hand on it. But they're lucky there. They keep trapping Osandico. I don't know why. You're leaving Eric Reynolds wide open. Let him make a move to the paint and make a two. Bearstow. Short on the three, Fleming with the rebound. That's a good box out by Fleming. Why? Why, Tom? Why is, why is, why is he taking that three? Yeah, why is he taking I get your open. He had a why? vision. He had a vision. Walk, you had many visions like that. <laughs> well, that was a good three point shooter, though. I knocked that one down. <laughs> you can't leave C. Walk open. Don't do that. Reynolds, Asandico, this time closer to the basket, and finger roll is good. That action is wide open, plus you have Cameron Brown in the corner. You have to help a lot earlier, force Asandico to charge into you. Too much space for him. Billy Lang is really working that action. Six forty to play. Second half. Barstow. Got Fleming guarding Barstow, not allowing him to drive on the biggest, the bigger player. Shot clock going down. It's at three. Jackson drives to the hoop and somehow is able to sweep it off the glass for a three-point lead. And Eric Reynolds, he's got to space him. Asanico doing a great job offensive, but you got to move that big body over. And you force Zeb Jackson to kick the ball, particularly at the end of the shot clock. Jackson has 10. Xavier Brown up top. Bamisil covering him. They go to the corner. Fleming along the baseline is bumped by Bearstow. With 6-10 to play here in the second half. Oh, there's a lot of emotion for a chance to go out of the A-10 finals. To their fate will be. 
I think you and I are in agreement that Richmond has uh, the personnel to definitively compete in the NCAA tournament. This league has the ability to have more than one seat, one one bid for the NCAA tournament. I certainly would agree. Freer inbounds pass. Asanico got free, and he's fouled going up by Furman. Let's check in with AJ. Well, Tom, as you talk about the parity in this A-10, I talked with Eric Reynolds about that in yesterday's practice. He said the conference as a whole just gets overlooked and doesn't get the respect it deserves. He says a lot of teams have a lot of great players, and every time you deliver a punch, there's a counter punch mm. from another team. And he says that's what makes this league so great. Those seedings really aren't accurate for the level of competition in the A-10, guys. Yeah, in fact, we talked about it. You know, Richmond came in as the preseason 11th seed. Because you didn't know who all of these transfers were going to evolve into right for Chris Mooney And he did a spectacular job. He was the coach of the year. You can say the same thing about Loyola. He had all of these Transfers come in meanwhile for Billy Lang who you just saw he kept everybody <laughs> right from last year Player retention and it's hard either way and as much as Chris Mooney did a tremendous job We definitely got to give Drew Valentine some love. Oh, yeah, he did a great job having having a tough year last year And they tied for the league championship as well. Here's Bama seal off the glass His body goes fall to the floor. Nothing was called five on four st. Joseph's has the advantage down by one cam Brown for three No good and the ball deflected by Fleming saved by Bama seal. What a play by, by Bama seal as <laughs> Reynolds knocked it loose. If you see Reynolds, it looked like VCU definitely had that rebound. Eric Reynolds comes out of nowhere. The extra plays, the extra efforts, that's what it takes to win in games of this magnitude. Shot clock is at two. Cam Brown way downtown. No good off the side of the rim. The rebound, though, is run down by Jackson. By the way, if you look at the fouls, VCU has five. St. Joseph's has one team foul. So in the adage of letting them play, they're letting them play. They certainly are, and St. Joe's to be very aggressive because they have not fouled, keeping them out of the lanes. <laughs> Jackson almost turned it over. Shot clock oh, is wow. at nine. Shulga with a sweet stroke from the free throw line. He has 20 points. Over six for six in this half. May have gotten away with a little chicken wing there. Seven 20-point game of the year for Max Shulga. Reynolds step back three is good he rattles at home. He just tied this baby up at 52 Tommy did a tremendous job of separation He came off that tight handoff inside two and gave enough space for him to step back to his range from three What a game Shulga with the answer Shulga oh. does answer a resounding answer 55 52 the two top scores are battling it out I continue to say I think Billy Lane's got to make sure the big guards Shoga off the screen or trap him and force Furman and Lowell to make shots Sandico lost it Fleming picked it up Fleming caught the double team Shot clock is under 10 Greer shot clock is at five Greer gets it up to the right for Fleming for three it's good whoa Rashir Fleming He's definitely capable of making them one. That is a huge three. One of the biggest in his career right now. How we're going to guard Shoga is going to be a huge question. Ten on the shot clock. Bama Seal still not gotten going. Bama Seal finally is on the score column. I love Asanico, but he's playing in a drop. Every time they come off a screen, he's playing too far back. He has to come up and help. Three minutes to play in the second half. Reynolds covered by Shoga. Reynolds, little shake and bake. Cam Brown swings it to Greer. Inside for Sondago. Shot clock is at eight. Cam Brown. Shot clock is at five. Through the defense, lost control. Here comes Bearstow running with Bamisil. Bearstow high stepping to the basket, lays it in. Tom, you were right there letting them play. <laughs> and a timeout called to take a breath. Tom, we got a great one here. You see the BCU faithful Bearstow from down under.
for St. Joe's a terrific game plan to this point, but 65%. You, you can't win if you're giving up 65%. And I'll still say this, Tom, BCU is doing it without making triples. Right. <laughs> and by the way, we want to point out that Barstow had that last bucket. He has 13 points. That 13 gives him 1,000 for his college career. Sandico is on the floor and he's holding his knee. He got wow. tied up with Lawal. And Billy Lang is saying, hey, man, he was knocked to the floor. Yeah, I'd have to see that one. I don't know if Shoga coming off bumped knees mall right now. So when Shoga comes off the screen, they can switch. Right. Right. I like that as opposed to Asandico being in the game and them being in the drop. Sometimes, obviously, we don't want the young man to be hurt. But it may play to St. Joe's advantage defensively. 220 to play here in the second half. Four point lead for VCU. Xavier Brown covered by Zeb Jackson up top, finding Reynolds. Reynolds covered by Shulga. The two best scorers are defending each other. They should work that pick and roll action with Fleming. He can make a three. Shot clock is at two. Pull up Jay for Brown. It's good as the shot clock winds down. And think about it, Tom. The reason why that happens is because Fleming can make a shot. They're worried about getting back to Fleming, leaving Brown an angle to get to the rim to knock down the, the deuce. Yeah, he averages 11, making his 90th consecutive start. Made more starts or appearances than anybody else in St. Joseph's history. See right there. See, they switched that screen. They had the wall in there, but I would. Zeb Jack's a little shake and bake, and he sweeps in with his right hand, lays it in for a four point lead. Yeah, I was just going to say, you caught me mid sentence. All Fleming has to do is space him. You're trying to block a jump shot of a guy who's 0 for 5 from 3. Space him and force him to shoot over the top. 120 to play. The Rams are trying to defend their Atlantic 10 championship. Greer into the paint. Greer kicks it out. Cam Brown for three. Yes! What a game. <laughs> but it comes down to what? The defensive end. What is St. Joe's going to do here? Got to dig in. You got to get a stop. We'll see Ryan Odom cooks up. Look for shoulder to come off the screen, switch it, and take advantage of the mismatch on Fleming. Under a minute to play. VCU covered up top. Shulga skips it to Bamasil. Bamasil, quick first step under the basket. Jansen home! 42 points in the paint for the Rams. And a timeout called by St. Joseph's. Wow. Bamasil's been really quiet. I would go for the three here, or if not, get the deuce because they're going to try to take away all the shooters. Shulga is on Reynolds on the inbounds. Both fan bases are standing all the way around the bottom rim here at Barclays. And look for don't, don't be surprised if there's some pick and pop action with Fleming in the wall. Reynolds falls to the floor, and a foul is called on VCU, and I think it's Shulga. It is. That's his first, team sixth. And again, St. Joseph's will have to inbound again. Watch number 11. That's one of the lighter fouls of the day. <laughs> but hey, listen, kudos to this group. They've allowed them to play. We've got an A1 Final Four crew. And this is the way the players and coaches would prefer it. Inbounds pass. Goes into Cam Brown. Shot is partially blocked by Shulga. He'll get it up to Bearstow, who's fouled by Fleming. That's the fourth on Fleming. Size of the big, of their guards. Affected Brown there. Got the ball right where they wanted. Probably should have used a shot fake or pump fake, pump fake before he went up to take that shot. That's why this defense is so good. And there's still fouls to give away, though. Yeah, Quachik comes in because of that. Fleming's out with four. Got a trap. Got a trap. You got to get after him. Really, it's a great time to reach. As you mentioned, refs are allowing them to play, particularly here if they throw the ball in the corner by half court. Bear still will inbound, gets it to Shulga. Shulga is double teamed and fouled, so that'll be the, the fourth team foul. Third team foul, excuse me. Yeah, but I would try, Tom, to get a trap before you foul him. See if we can get him trapped in the corner, any one of the corners, and then the interceptor comes. All right, but you know this as a former coach. <laughs> Their minds are racing right now. Their, Their minds might be they? racing, but, you know, you got to play smart. Yeah. And you got to do what the coach says. Now, if he's telling them to foul right away, which he could be, that's fine. 
Now, this that's different, but if they put you in a situation where you are running to the ball and there's two guy defenders there and you can trap them, trap them, and not let the trappers be the ones that foul and let the interceptors be the ones that go after the ball. I think the officials want to look at this. So the shot clock is off because the ball went into the backcourt. John Gaffney just reminded both officials of that. So the shot clock is off. And Bama Seals fouled by Reynolds. So now that's five team fouls. Yeah, see, I would take Quachick off the ball. There's no reason. It's five on four. The, the guy out of bounds has no bearing on what's going on. Put Quachick five on four and make it a little bit more disruptive. He, he has no bearing on it. Bearstow calls a timeout. So each team now down to one timeout with 24.4 to play. It's a three-point lead for VCU. The winner moves on to face Duquesne and St. Pressure makes water pipes bust. I know you've heard that before. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard it and I've also seen it, so I'm with you on it. 24.4 to play. Different setup for VCU. St. Joseph's is still on the basketball. Great switch. Right now, got it. And Shulga gets it to Jackson. Jackson in the corner. And he's fouled with 20.5 to play. Boy, it felt like it was a lifetime that went <laughs> off the clock. But it was only five seconds that went off. It was only. And, Tom, even then, I still would have. Once you had him and he was conceding, trap him and force him to be in the rest. Right. Well, so now the next foul will send both teams to the bonus. They get into Shulga. Oh, Shulga double team right up top. And Nelson is fouled from behind. And Billy Lang cannot believe it over on the sidelines. They got it. It was awfully close to getting a steal. And he just threw his hands on his head. Yeah, because it's, it's a push-pull situation. Once the trap comes, once the other player leaves, they should be pushing and pulling him. The, and the other guy's coming, which is the interceptor. And again, you don't want to foul this team. They're the best in the conference. Well, but you know what? Tom. It's, are they the best at this time of the game? That's all that matters. And it's Nelson the guy. Yeah, Nelson 80% for the free throw line. The fourth three of the day, and it's out of bounds. Tipped out of bounds. It'll be BCU basketball. Yeah, I think they got to look at that again. Shoulder was over the back. BCU is one for four from the free throw line. This is an 80% free throw shooter, but like you said, if they throw the ball to the corner, trap, don't foul. Trap, I say it again, trap, don't foul. Totally Wall gets it, foul him. I would just let him get it and foul him. He's 64% from the free throw line, so he would probably be the guy. Bearstow will inbound. One timeout left. Bearstow better call it. He did. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so that's it for Ryan Odom's team. Ryan, in his first year as the head coach at VCU, did a wonderful job that you're just going to stay in the game. He's 64 percent. See, I wouldn't even guard him. There's, there's no reason. I would just let him stay out there and take everything else away and force him to throw it to him. Well, they'll defend the inbound. Fleming is on Bearstow. No timeouts left for BCU. Bearstow, he better just throw it up, and he does. Jackson has it at midcourt, and Jackson is a jump ball. And the possession remains with BCU. Wrench and I said about forcing to throw the ball towards the other end. Like, you don't want that situation. No. So the possession arrow will go toward VCU with a three-point lead. So they're discussing right now, where do we inbound the ball? Most, some people may think backcourt, not backcourt. You can throw it. Is that... Zeb Jackson caught the ball and said, where, John Gapson, where do we inbound the basketball? Yeah, so Brian O'Connell uh, just went over to him. Gaff re reminded Brian before. Now Brian reminds Gaff here. So there we go. I think this freedom actually helps BCU. The space actually helps BCU. Yeah, switching every single thing, force the wall to get it fouling. 15.2 to play, three-point lead. Bearstow, no timeouts, gets it into Shulga. Shulga dribbles away from Brown, whistle blows. What we got? And a blocking ah. foul is called on Xavier Brown. You see Billy Lane, emphatic, saying it was a push off. Well, it's going to send Shulga to the free throw line. Oh, wow. It's close. It's definitely close. Yeah. 
I mean, Xavier Brown was was physical, but Shoga pushed him off. So Shoga will go to the line. It'll be his first free throw attempt of the day. He has 23 points. As a team, VCU is one of four. It's a one and one. They need to box out is what they need to do. The same situation. You got Sean Barstow with Brown there again. He has a size advantage. Shoga usually knocks these down, but anything can happen, Tom. You know that. Absolutely. At this time of the year, Shoga 88% and converts there. In fact, Shoga is seventh now in free throws made in VCU history for a season. That shows you how many times he's gotten to the line, how good he is. He's made it a two-possession game. The pinch on one side, rounds and box out shoulder. Still got a chance to get a two and a foul. 19 second half points for Shoga. And he played amazing. Still got a chance, as I said, to get a two and a foul. Don't have to take a three. Greer. Back right to the rim. Greer. Oh, he's cut off by Bamasil. He should have gone to the cup, and a foul is called. It'll send Bamasil to the free throw line. And depending on these free throws. And how you can stretch out seven seconds, it's probably going to send VCU to another A-10 championship game. Value and effort, as I say, no one wants the foul, but you got to give Lawal credit. Lawal went up. He's just got to try to shoot that, and maybe he makes it. They call a foul on the wall. You got to take that He's shot. Got to take that shot. Got to take that shot. So now Bamasio with a big smile on his face, recruited to VCU at a high school. Went to Virginia Tech, then went to GW, then to Oklahoma. Now at VCU, and he converts, but it's still a two-possession game. This is the big one here to make it a three-possession ball game with very little time left on the clock. Yeah, no question. And, Tom, I'll say this. This is why Max Shoga and Sean Barristow came to VCU. Followed Ryan Oldham. They trusted the process, and they're going to be – it's going to mm. benefit them right now. They're going to have a chance to play in the nation title. Greer. Kicks it out. Uh, Xavier Brown for three. No good! And VCU winding through the irregular season. Winds up back in the Atlantic 10 championship. Seeking back-to-back -back titles.